I'm trying to work here and your warning isn't helping. You're working? Oh, you're working. I'm working as well. I'm doing a dopamine detox. A what? A dopamine detox. A dopamine detox? Apparently it can change your life. A dopamine detox? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw these YouTubers doing a dopamine detox. It was great. They were all enlightened afterwards and, and it gave a new meaning to their life. So it was awesome. And what exactly are you supposed to do for such a dopamine detox? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. You're not allowed to be stimulated by anything. So, are we even allowed to talk then? Huh? Ah! Hello brain lovers, Gregory here from the Brain Academy. So yeah, dopamine detox or dopamine fasting. Is that a real thing? Well, let's find out. Okay, first things first, what is a dopamine detox? Well, the idea behind it is that we get overstimulated in today's modern world, which creates an overload of dopamine in our system, which is bad for us. Sorry, it's okay. And so doing a detox from time to time can help us regulate that. And the detox comes down to avoiding all stimulation, which includes no food. You can only drink water, no screens. So no internet, TV, phone, tablet, nothing. No music, no radio, no sex, not even masturbation. Reading, talking, and even exercise should be brought back to a strict minimum. Basically having as little fun as possible and boring yourself to oblivion. <laughs> so what are you allowed to do during such a detox? Walking, meditation, riding and drinking water of course. So what's the science behind this? Well, dopamine is a neurotransmitter in our brain. It's active in reward and anticipation. So every time we do something we enjoy, we get a little shot of dopamine. <sighs> and the interesting part with dopamine is that the next time we're about to do that enjoyable thing, well, we release dopamine before the activity. And that's the anticipation part. It makes us want more of it. Now, dopamine is the bad boy of the neurochemicals. It's basically associated with sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> well, that's cool, baby. I mean, you know how it is, rocking and rolling and whatnot. And because of the way dopamine works, it's the cause of our addictions. You see, the first time we do something we enjoy, well, we get our dopamine shot. Woohoo, that was fun, let's do it again, right? The anticipation part. So we do it again. And that was again loads of fun, but slightly less because we already knew what was coming, right? So we do it again and again and again, and each time there's less dopamine that gets released. We get used to the activity, and if we do it often enough, it might even become boring. That's what psychologists call hedonic adaptation. It's just like with dinosaurs. I remember the first time I saw a dinosaur on screen back in the 90s. I was like, wow. And now with every new Jurassic Park movie, the dinosaurs are getting bigger faster, smarter, meaner, hungrier, and so on. And there seem to be more of them. And I just don't seem to care anymore. That's how dopamine works. That's how it's supposed to work in a normal, natural setting. We do something fun, we get used to it, and then we move on. Imagine if that wouldn't be the case. We would just be repeating the same activity over and over again because it's just so fantastic. And in an extreme case, we might even stop eating and drinking and would die eventually. Now the thing is, there is a way to bypass that fading away of the experience. And that is to simply get more of the same. So more of the same experience, more thrill, more excitement. And that way we still release the same amount of dopamine. You start going down a rabbit hole and do each time more of the same or more extreme versions of the same experience. <laughs> So with drugs, you take more drugs. With gambling, you gamble bigger amounts of money. With sex, you try new positions or new partners or more partners. Anyway, you get the picture. You start to understand why dopamine has bad press, right? 
Now, dopamine, in the case of addictions, is problematic. It will slow down our neurogenesis, which is the creation of new brain cells, and you basically don't want that. However, dopamine, on a normal level, is actually really good for our brain. It stimulates that same neurogenesis. It's a healthy mechanism in a normal functioning brain. It makes life fun and adds excitement to it. And the thing is, you can't get rid of it. We have natural, normal dopamine levels in our brain, regardless of stimulation. So the whole idea of dopamine fasting or detox is just a misconception, a misrepresentation, because when you're doing such a detox, you're not affecting your dopamine levels in your brain. That's not what is happening. So what is happening? Well, it basically comes down to the P in LMNOP. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my TEDx talk. You'll find the link below. P stands for pauses and is one of the five main pillars of a healthy brain. Our brain needs regular pauses to function optimally. We can't stay focused 10 hours on end on a task. So these pauses include short breaks during the day, the evening when we get home, weekends are great breaks, and holidays of course. It gives time to our brain to digest and process information and reset our attention. Now this dopamine detox, and we just established that this isn't an actual dopamine detox, it reminds me a lot of a very common spiritual practice, which is a retreat. You know, during a retreat, you go to a place where you get time to think, pray, meditate, whatever works for you, or is part of your spiritual practices. Now that place is usually a calm one, where your mind can find some peace, where you're not distracted by uh, modern technology or even other people talking. <laughs> There are these silent retreats where you're not allowed to speak during days on end. I have several close friends who have done that. It's challenging, but apparently it's great. I've done several retreats myself and I can only recommend them. Get out of the rat race, press that pause button and give your mind some time to reset. Now this dopamine fasting is just some modern version of a spiritual retreat without the spiritual, where you stay in your actual setting and you shut yourself off from the world and any physical distraction. So what it all comes down to is this. Dopamine detox or dopamine fasting is not a real thing, at least from a dopamine point of view. It won't affect your dopamine levels. Does that mean you shouldn't do it? No, 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 on the contrary, you should. It is really great to do. It's a great practice for keeping a healthy brain. The only thing is its name. Dopamine detox, dopamine fasting. Well, it's catchy, I'll guarantee you that, but your dopamine levels won't get affected. Your cortisol levels, however, hmm. Cortisol, the stress hormone, is a brain killer. And I don't mean that figuratively. Cortisol kills brain cells. It physically kills them. No, please don't kill me, Mr. Ghostface. And when you hit that pause button for one hour, one day, one week or more, and you add meditation to that and reflecting and some walking, preferably in nature, and silence, well, you'll also sleep better with that. Well, in short, it's, it's like bringing your car to the garage for a total maintenance job. It's just good practice. So instead of calling it dopamine detox, we should call it cortisol detox or cortisol fasting that is a made-up name mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. or just detox whatever so is dopamine detox a real thing well yes and no because when you're doing it it's not doing what you thought it was doing even though what it is doing is really beneficial to you so keep on doing it have you ever tried a detox or a retreat? Share in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out some of our other episodes. And if you want the real stuff, go to brainacademy.com. Join our 300,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen.